Thank you very much to the um, for joining us today for the 28th annual interface peace gathering to commemorate the Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bombs. The part one today is on Hiroshima Day on August 5th at 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the part two is on the other day, on Nagasaki Day on August 8th at 8 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. in Eastern Standard Time. This year marks the 76th year after the atom bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. This year's gathering is be held online on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. August 5th at 7.15 p.m. here is uh, in Eastern Standard Time is equivalent to August 6th at 8.15 a.m. in Japan when the first atomic bomb was dropped to Hiroshima. And then August 8th at 10.02 p.m. in Eastern Standard Time is equivalent to August 9th at 11.02 a.m. in Japan when the second and last atomic bomb was dropped to Nagasaki. We will offer a moment of silence at those times and ring the peace bell. So this event will include interface peace prayers and meditation by various religious traditions, including Buddhist, Shintoist, Hinduism, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and African indigenous religion interface. So let me introduce um, the today's um, the events organizer, Dr. T.K. Nakagaki. So um, hi, this is uh, Reverend T.K. Nakagaki. I'm uh, president of the Hewa Peace and Reconciliation Foundation of New York. So I'd like to welcome all of you to join us today uh, for this uh, 28th uh, interfaith gathering. Uh, as the uh, uh, Nakamura-san, uh, Yoshiko-san, uh, she's a chair today, uh, mentioned that um, the, this is a part one, the Hiroshima day, and a part two will be the Nagasaki day. So those two are very important day that I think uh, I'm consider it's a very important time to really reflect upon the, how dangerous the nuclear weapons are, and also how important those peace, you know, peace that we have. And then, the, yeah, Fortunately, the third one was never be used yet, but right now in the world, do you know how many nuclear weapons existed, uh, existing right now? You know, it's like a 13, I mean, uh, 13,000, you know, over 13,000, you know, nuclear weapons exist, which all of them is much, much, much stronger than the one that was used for the Hiroshima or Nagasaki. And if any accident happens, that will be, you know, the really chaotic for our planet. And so it is, in a way, it's a very, very urgent, like, a, you know, Corona I think is, I guess, considered urgent, but yet this uh, nuclear weapon itself is really urgent for the humanity and also this planet of Earth. And so uh, that's something that I want you to be aware and all the people who are watching this be aware of how dangerous, uh, uh, threatening, you know, for all the humanity and all the, this planet of Earth for, that we have for the nuclear weapons. So uh, having said that, you know, because especially this year, uh, the, those treaty um, was um, the January 22nd this year, um, the nuclear, um, Sorry, <laughs> my, my my brain the little break, but stop. But uh, so it, so the treaty become um, uh, what do you call it effective, and so therefore, uh, you know, of course, not all of the country agree, but yet uh, that's legal illegal to have a nuclear weapons now, and so that's you know it's nice to 
support each other to do all those things. And today, and even this time, a lot of places, they're observing this ceremony. And then uh, I, we're not competing each other, but rather we try to help each other and then push this uh, view and everybody together to try to bring the peace and try to stop the nuclear weapons. And so that we all be able to live peacefully and uh, you know pursue the happiness that we live, believe. And so, and uh, from that, I wanted to keep continue to have, I think the patient is very important for the peace, I think. So today I try to be patient. I, 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 know I have a lot of stuff around here, but yet, uh, uh, so I, I think in a way, practicing a peace in every day is that way too. So personal uh, things are very, very important for that. So. Thank you very much again for joining. And we'll begin with the video that we prepared. Let me start with a little peace light to calm down first.
So first, we would like to start with the Buddhist Council uh, from Buddhist Council of, Jap uh, of New York, Dante uh, Contania. Okay. Thank you, dear colleagues, friends. To wishing the peace for the whole world. It's very important day, the event that took place in the world is so very destructive from since then. We all pray for the peace and harmony among all beings. Wishing so, I will recite the sutra, piece of sutras from the teachings of the Buddha. Atu Pamaya Sabbitang Satanang Sukha Kamatang Pasitva Kamato Mitang Sabba Satante Subhavaye Sukhi Bhaviyang Nidukho Ahang Nichang Ahang Vya Hitachami Sukhi Hontu Majatha Tachaverinu Imami Gamak Ketami Vale Sujantuno. Having seen that all beings, like oneself, have a desire for happiness, one should methodically develop loving friendliness towards all beings. May we be happy and free from suffering, and may all of always, like myself, ourselves, may my friends, my uh, friends, neutral persons, and hostile, as well as be happy too. May all beings in the village, in this state, in the other countries, and all the world system be very happy and peaceful. May all persons, individuals, beings, creatures, and all beings in all world systems be very happy. So too, may all women, men, noble ones, non-noble ones, gods, humans, and beings, the lower world be happy. May all beings in the ten directions be happy and well. May peace prevail in the world. Thank you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. As you might know, the word Gaia means our mother planet Earth in Greek. As you might know, the word Gaia means our mother planet Earth in Greek. Everyone living helps each other in accordance with the law of nature of this planet. Sun, moon, and starlight, wind, air, water, fire, tree, and grasses, we all come from very same source of, very same source of for the universe, from the universe, way back at the beginning of Gaia. And we are allowed to live temporarily on this planet. Thank you to Gaia. My life force also is a part of Gaia. My mind and thoughts are the manifestation of mind of Gaia. Whatever happens on this planet, Gaia, belongs and matters to myself and to all the sentient beings on this planet, Gaia. With this thought, I live this and the, every moment thoroughly in accordance and in harmony with all other life force coexisting, cooperating, and in peace with them all. We humans had a given very special brain and mind of Excel. And throughout the history, we tried to conquer other species of lives because of the simple greed of misconception, thinking this was the advancement of human beings. We human destroyed what existed on this planet as a part of nature. The worst human history is repeated attempt to destroy other fellow being for greed and for land and power. This technique of weapon advanced so much. For this purpose, the human eventually developed a nuclear weapon 
and used them for Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Japan was destroyed. But nowadays, we Japanese even take as at ease one of the major disasters that cause every year in Japan. Perhaps this was a way to bear the incident in Japanese mind in the long run. 76 years has passed. Today, we should realize and contemplate what this incident meant for humankind and our planet Gaia herself. We should think about today why weapon is still escalating. How can we stop? Yeah. Cool. Hinduism is not religious like other religions. It has no one God, or rather, Kami God, okay. exists in everything on this planet. We say millions of Kami okay. everywhere. Our universe itself is Kami God. I would like to give blessing on all involved today peace ceremony in Shinto style with deepest gratitude and appreciation. Dr. Kazuko Tatsumura. Okay, I am going to uh, purify. Kakemakumo kashikoki izanami no okami, tsukushimu mukaze no tachibana no odo no. Toki ni naseru masuru haraeto no no okami tachi. Moromoro no magao to tsumi no tegare aranu mo oba. Araeta mawe, kiyoeta mae, kiyoeta mae to mousu koto kiyoshimesu to kashikomi kashikomi mousu. Thank you very much, Dr. Kazuko Tatsumura. And next, we will welcome uh, Guru Dilip Kumar Samkapan from Hinduism, from um, Lore Yoga Community. Sugandim Pustivardanam, Purva, Yugumia Pendana, Murtur, Mukshe, Amam Ruda, Om, Trayambagam, Majamahe, Sugandim Pustivardanam, Purva, Yugumia Pendana, Murtur, Mukshe, Amam Ruda, Om, Trayambagam, Majamahe, Sugandim Pustivardanam, Purva, Yugumia Pendana, Murtur, Mukshe, Amam Ruda, Om, Sarvesham, Sustil Bodu, Sarvesham, Shantil Bodu, Sarvesham Purnam Bhavadu, Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavadu, Sarve Bhavandu Sugina, Sarve Sandu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pachandu, Magachet Dukabhad Bhavi, Asadoma Satgamaya, Samasoma Jodir Gamaya, Mrityorma Amradam Gamaya, Om Purnamada Purnamitam Purna, Purnamudachade, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishade, Yoga Samasta Sugino Bavandu Yoga Samasta Sugino Bavandu Yoga Samasta Sugino Bavandu Om Shandi 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 May peace prevail on earth. Thank you. Arigata Goday Master. And next. We we'll welcome from Christianity, Miss Rosemary Pace, from Pax Christi, we'll New York State. From Christianity, Miss Rosemary Pace. The following are excerpts Christi, of a reflection by Bishop Maurice. The following are Norman. excerpts of a reflection by Bishop Maurice. And a prayer by Amen. Father Rob Estale. And a prayer. By Father Rob August 6th is worthy of note. 
marks the occasion of okay. two important Good. events. It's worthy of note. In Roman Catholic, the Anglican, and Orthodox Christian tradition, in Roman celebrate the Anglican of the Transfiguration on Mount Tabor. Celebrate of the Transfiguration on Mount Tabor. In our contemporary world, it marks the anniversary of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima in Japan. Tabor speaks of the Christ transfigured before his apostles. Hiroshima speaks of Christ disfigured before the world. The scriptural event of Tabor brings hope and love and optimism. The historical event of Hiroshima brings only the specter of disaster and foreboding and pessimism. The two events of Tabor and Hiroshima are poles apart. Yet there is a striking likeness in the bright and shining cloud. Matthew tells us in his gospel that a bright cloud covered them. When Hiroshima was bombed, an atomic cloud covered that city. In the vision of Tabor, we can live in the bright light of the transfigured Christ. In the terrible reality of Hiroshima, we die in the disfiguration of a man-made technological product. And so August 6th is a time for meditation and prayer. God, our creator and sustainer, we gather to pray in the midst of a broken people who today remember the darkness and the shadow of death and destruction caused by nuclear weapons. We know that we deal falsely with the world and with ourselves, healing wounds too lightly by saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. Let there be sown in us anew the unity, the light and the peace which passes all understanding. Be with us today and keep our minds and hearts in you and in your peace. We remember the tens of thousands of people in Hiroshima who died as a result of the atomic bombs. May they rest in peace. We remember all those who died in the war with Japan, especially those who perished in the prisoner of war camps. We remember those who gave their lives to help those suffering after the bomb and who died of radiation sickness. May their faithful and loving witness inspire us to compassion. We remember those who were able to forgive the suffering inflicted on them by their enemies in war. We pray for the same greatness of heart. We will remember the peacemaker visionaries who have come before us and we will give thanks for their witness and their commitment to life. We pray that we may be transformed by God and witness to the peace of Christ. Amen. Thank you very much, Ms. Rosemary Pace. And next, we will welcome Rabbi Mark Rich Klein from Judaism. There's a prayer that says, Ufros Alenu Sukachalomecha, spread over us the shelter of your peace. Sometimes the tune goes like this, and if those four words are too much, there's a la 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 part that I encourage you to do at home. Ufrosalenu sukat sukat shlomecha. Yalai lai lai, yalai lai lai, yalai lai 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 Yalai lai 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 Ufro salenu Sukat Sukat Shlomecha <coughs> Peace, as we learn from that, is a very fragile structure and unfortunately, in, on August 6th, that fragility was clearly evident. It's fragile all over the world. And a young woman, when she was just 11, Tali Sorek, 
wrote a poem, I Had a Box of Colors. I had a box of colors shining bright and bold. I had a box of colors, some warm, some very cold. I had no red for the blood of wounds. I had no black for the orphan's grief. I had no white for dead faces and hands. I had no yellow for burning sands, but I had orange for the joy of life. And I had green for the buds and nests. I had blue for bright, clear skies. I had pink for dreams and rest. I sat down and painted peace. In my congregation here, somewhat removed from New York, um, we have four peace poles. And when um, one of my, one of the speakers talked about, may peace prevail on earth, we have stenciled that in multiple languages. We have four of those peace poles surrounding our community garden that we use to um, feed the hungry. And so I think about our students who built the peace poles. I think about Tali Surik, age 11, and I think about all those thousands of cranes that have been made in the name of peace. Amen. Thank you very much, Laban Margaret Rich Klein. Thanks for welcome the welcome. Imam Muhammad Shahidullah from Islam. Imam Muhammad Shahidullah from Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening, 76th anniversary of Hiroshima Day, 28th annual Hiroshima and Nagasaki Interfaith Peace Gathering organized by Heiwa Peace and Reconciliation Foundation of New York. I want to say special thanks to Dr. Nagasaki. I want to start like the prayer. Auzubillahi minash shaitani wajim. Bismillahi wa rahmani wa rahim. Let's just pray. Alhamdulillahi rabbilalamin wa rahmani wa rahim. Malik Yomin, Ia Kanabudu, Ia Kanastain, Idinatul Mustakim, Siratul Lazina and Amtalehim, Oiril Magdu Bialehim, all in Amin. We ask to give all of us around the peace in our mind, body, soul, and the spirit. We want to tell and remove everything that we constrain and sorrow in our lives. Especially like we pray for all of like, those 80,000 people are die and injured, almost 35,000 people. May God bless and peace them. And uh, our beloved prophet mentioned, oh God, you are peace, from you come peace. To you, return peace, revive us with solution, salutation of peace, and lead us to you above of peace. Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, tabaratta zul jalali wal ikram. O Allah, you are peace, and from you in peace, blessed are you, O majestic and generous. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, we're sorry for the technical problem, but we now could in, uh, introduce. Uh, Good evening, everyone. My name is Minister Only Love Chika Alston, and I'm the racial justice organizer at the Interfaith Center of New York. I'm also the leader of Prophetic Whirlwind Ministries, an African-American messianic ministry rooted in the Torah practice of the Jews of West Africa. We send our deepest sympathies to the people of Japan, especially those held in American internment camps. And I can deeply empathize with that as an African-American whose ancestors were held on plantations in the South. We also send our deepest prayers and condolences to all of those 
who were impacted directly and indirectly by the bombing. I stand with the people of Japan as you cry out for peace and justice. And so I will be praying through passages from the prophet Isaiah chapter 40 and the African-American national anthem, lift every voice and sing. In the name of Yahshua, I pray. Ruach HaKodesh, have your way. Comfort your people today the way a mother comforts a weeping child. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. With gentle words, tender and kind, a voice is wailing in the wilderness, get it ready, prepare the way, make it a straight shot. The eternal would have it so, straighten the way in the wandering desert to make the crooked road wide and straight for our God. Where there are steep valleys, treacherous descents, raise the highway, lift it up. Bring down the dizzying heights, fill in the potholes and gullies, the rough places. Iron out the shoulders, iron out the shoulders, flat and wide. Yahweh will be, really be, among us. The radiant glory of God will be revealed. All flesh together will take it in, believe it. None other than the Holy One, the Eternal, has spoken. A voice declares, but what shall I declare? All life is like grass. All of its grace and beauty fades like the wild flowers in a field. The grass withers, the flower fades as the breath of the eternal one blows away. People are no different from grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. Nothing lasts except the word of our God. It stands forever. Don't you know, haven't you heard, the eternal, the everlasting God, the creator of the whole world never gets tired or weary. His wisdom is beyond understanding. God strengthens the weary and gives vitality to those worn down by age and care. Young people will get tired. Strapping young men will stumble and fall, but those who trust in the eternal one will regain their strength. They will soar on wings as angel, an eagles. They will run never winded, never weary. They will walk never tired and never faint. The words of the prophet Isaiah, and now I share words from Lift Every Voice and Sing, the African-American National Anthem. May it, may it comfort my Japanese brothers and sisters on this day. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, fell in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our father sighed. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out from the gloomy past, till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way. Thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Least our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Least our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to our God and true to our native land. But, Holy one, I ask that you comfort the people of Japan today. We ask that you would bring peace to this world. We ask that never again will atomic bombs be dropped on this earth. Father, we ask that you give us the strength to do what we have to do to bring your shalom to this broken world. Comfort, comfort the people of Japan today and all those who mourn injustice. In Yahshua's name, amen. Thank you very much, Minister Only Love As Stone. And next, 
um, Tiki will start to talk about uh, peace bell ringing in moment of silence. Thank you very much for all the prayer that we have. And uh, so we will do soon for the ringing the bell. So right now is uh, in Japan like 8, almost 14. Yeah, so one more minute. And so what we're going to show is a peace bell from uh, Hiroshima uh, Peace Park. And uh, you, you will hear a lot of uh, sound around, which is the uh, uh, cicadas. And uh, in Japan in the summer, this is also the part of the atomic bomb. Although it's uh, described as a very nice day, you know, the blue sky, but also mm -hmm. underneath, there is the all the circuits, uh, you know, just making a lot of noise, and so so that's the part of the things that uh, the people remember, and so, oh uh, yeah, only fifteen seconds. So I'd like to be ready mm -hmm. for the bell. So I hope we can video, you know, what is sharing this time. Okay, so good. Wish me, uh, well, wish us the luck. was the bell from the Hiroshima uh, Peace Park. So I thank you very much for uh, you two joining this bell ring. So every year we decide to have this uh, ceremony centering the, this particular time. So which 7.15 p.m. here is equal to the 7, I mean, sorry, 8.15 a.m. in Japan. Hiroshima time. So um, this time I do have some videos sent from uh, Hiroshima. Uh, his name is uh, uh, Reverend Kenjo um, Omori. And his temple is, is uh, closest to the epicenter. So the membership is all gone and the temple is gone. And so later, um, that I mean, at least that's a temple I wanted to share with you. But the one point that I like to, uh, you know, understand is the sometimes we see from the outside, but then the inside, what, what it means that they have, all the statues and things have, I would like you to sort of meditate and think. And so he'll be speaking in Japanese and uh, part of the English that I probably added to. So, so maybe we can uh, sort of, uh, what do you call it? Um, you can meditate a little moment, then we just play the next part. And I'll add it to some English translation as much as I can. And um, okay, so all right, then the let me play another um, video that the Reverend Kenjo is sharing his talk. Okay. Hello. Yeah, no, 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 no
させていただきました。今年も去年と同様に新型コロナウイルスの影響で大幅に希望す縮小する形で平和記念公園では式典が行われております。Uh, like last year, we also had the coronavirus this year. So, so we are observing、um, the ceremony. At the, each place, not in a gathering. And so, this is a statue, and welcome all of you to join、uh, my temple. And every year, I pay respect to this statue. I'll explain why. <laughs> I'm、uh, living very close to the Heiwa Peace Park in Hiroshima, and I'm taking care of this statue as well as、uh, I'm the president or a principal actually of the、uh, kindergarten. The, the temple、uh, manage. This statue is created using the ashes or、uh, bones by the people who lost their lives. By atomic bomb, and、uh, about 80, I'm sorry, 4,800 people's bones、uh, here in this、uh, Amita. So, this statue itself is made by bones, of human bones. Taking care of, of this statue and、uh, wishing for the peace. And this tragedy, tragedy never happened to anyone.、I'm、wishing always for the peace. And at the same time, Uh, I wanted to see the children's smile continue. My name is Tomiko Morimoto West. I'm almost 90 years old now, but、uh, when a atomic bomb dropped, I was only 13. So that was a long time ago. However, I still can remember every little thing as it happened yesterday. But I have forgotten all the bad things happened to me, and my life is perfect right now. So、uh, I'd like you to know that. Uh, however, I lost my husband three, three and a half years ago, and I live here by myself. But uh, uh, the, everyone is very good to me, and、uh, I am the luckiest person in the whole world. So, about the atomic bomb, that was、uh, 8 15 to be exact on August 6, 1945. And uh, uh, at that time, We didn't go to,、uh, we had to give up the uh, uh, pen and the notebook. And, uh, so we had to go to、uh, work in the government factory to support the uh, 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 war affair. So, anyway, so I was on the outside of this factory and、uh, I saw the B 29 flying and、uh, I recognized the sound of the、uh, B 29. And、uh, so it was only one plane. 
I looked up and I said, oh. they were just uh, taking the pictures as they came very often before that. So in the Sunday, the, uh, I saw the flash coming out of uh, airplane and uh, right after that, everything started falling down and I cover myself. And, and, uh, and anyways, uh, everything that right before that happened already, fire was coming from behind me. So only thing I could do was to uh, uh, run away from fire. And I ended up in this uh, uh, mountain, which is called Koi in Hiroshima. And uh, so we had to stay there for a couple of days. And uh, I, I saw that Hiroshima burning from the mountain. And the teacher said that, that we can go home if uh, your family could come to pick you up. And of course, how would I have known then? My family was dead. But anyway, so uh, later on, I was promised to uh, uh, leave for home. And my home was on the other side of Hiroshima. Uh, it's called Mount Hiji. So I had to go across the entire uh, Hiroshima city to get to my home. And the site between this Koi mountain to Hiroshima you know, to go home was travel site. The most uh, impressive thing I remember was little baby was sucking on mom's breast and the mom was dead. But then, you know, nothing I could do. I had to keep on moving. And I came to this the bridge was all down, so I had to go find the bridge where I could. Hiroshima has the seven rivers, and we had to go across the bridge no matter, uh, you know, which way you go. And this one bridge I could go was a railroad bridge. So it's like a, between the railroad ties is, is a water, and if you fall down, you just have to go to the ocean with the rest of the people. But, I managed to uh, go across that, and, and uh, <clears throat> I finally arrived where my home was, and of course it was uh, burnt. And uh, the man uh, who used to work for us, he said, uh, I didn't see your mom, but I saw your g g uh, grandmother and uh, grandfather. So I said, where were they? So they went to the... Uh, Mount Hiji, they had the uh, cave dug in there for to survive from the uh, you know bombing, and so so when I got there, they, they were alive, and uh, my grandfather's uh, back was uh, uh, all pierced with uh, broken glasses, and my grandmother she she was almost incoherent. But then uh, to make long story longer to make a long story shorter my grandfather died there and uh, then my grandmother died as uh, as she followed him and at that time we still had a japanese soldier because we did not end the 15th of august and soldiers came and they were trying to collect all the uh, uh, dead people, and I, I was only 13, I stood up to those soldiers, you're not taking my grandfather, I'll burn him myself, which I did. And so that was some experience for me, but since I had the, such a bad experience when I was young, every day I wake up is uh, such a peaceful day, and I am most grateful and I think I learned to appreciate everything I have right now. Uh, and so my life is a perfect right now, thanks to everybody. And so I guess I'll end my story. Tanka I made was a semi no neya, kokyo no neto wa koto naredo, natsu ga kita yo to ware ni style. Oh, especially in Hiroshima, where I come from. That in the summertime is all day long that the cicada keeps on chirping, chirping till it's quite annoying almost. So I'm here in Lagrangeville, I'm in country setting, and when I hear a cicada chirping, 
I think of Hiroshima very often, but uh, sound is quite different between uh, two countries. So that's why I made this uh, tanka uh, about that, uh, how different it is. And uh, cicada chirps differently in Japan, I mean Hiroshima and here, but uh, uh, message the same. Sama is near. So, so is it okay? Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Michi Takeuchi. I am the president of New York Hiroshima Association. I grew up in Hiroshima and my family survived the atomic bombing. Today, I'd like to share with you the highlights of the peace declaration made by the mayor of Hiroshima, Mayor Matsui. On this day, 76 years ago, a single atomic bomb instantly reduced our hometown to a scorched plain. That bombing brought cruel death to countless innocent victims and left those who managed to survive with profound lifelong physical and emotional injuries due to radiation, fear of after effects and economic hardship. One survival who gave birth to a girl soon after the bombing says, as more horrors of the bomb came to light and I became more concerned about their effects, I worried less about myself and more about my child. Imagining the future awaiting my daughter, my suffering grew night after sleepless night. No one else should ever suffer as we have. These words express the will of survivors who having to know horrors too painful to recall were condemned to fear, frustration, and agony by the likely future of their children in their own irradiated bodies. When Hibaksha tell their stories, they convey not only the horror and inhumanity of nuclear weapons, but also an intense yearning for peace born of compassion. Finally, after 75 long years of sustained activity, their demands have moved the international community this year. This year on January 22nd, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, TPNW, entered into effect it remains now for world leaders to support the treaty, shifting their focus toward a truly sustainable society free from nuclear weapons. The road to abolition will not be smooth, but a ray of hope shines from the young people now taking up the Hibaksha's quest. One survival who witnessed held that day and trust our future to the young with these words. Start small, but start. I hope each of you will do whatever you can to promote and maintain the treasure we call peace. 
I ask our young to sustain an unshakable conviction that nuclear weapons are incompatible with full, healthy lives for their loved ones. I further ask them to share that conviction persuasively with people around the world. Given the uncertainty concerning nuclear weapons derived from stalled disarmament negotiations, I have an urgent demand to make of world leaders. The time has come for a profound tactical shift away from the reliance threats and move toward security based on trust derived from dialogue. Experience has taught humanity that threatening others for self-defense benefits no one. Our leaders must understand that threatening rivals with nuclear weapons achieves nothing of value. But treating each other with empathy and building long-lasting friendship connect directly to national self-interest. To that end, I urge all world leaders to visit Hiroshima and Nagasaki, achieve a deeper understanding of the bombings, fulfill the disarmament mandate of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, and join the discussions aimed at maximizing the effectiveness of the TPNW. At this peace memorial ceremony, marking 76 years since the bombing, we offer heartfelt prayers for the peaceful repulse of the souls of the atomic bomb victims. Together with Nagasaki, and like-minded people around the world, we pledge to do everything in our power to abolish nuclear weapons and light the way toward lasting world peace. Matsui Kazumi, Mayor, the city of Hiroshima. Hi everyone, my name is Nobu Kimoto. I am a second generation Hibakusha from Nagasaki. I have lived in New York for 25 years and currently um, I'm uh, in Nagasaki Kenjinkai, also the chairman of um, New York Batenkai. At this time, I will read the mayor of Nagasaki's message for peace. Mayor message. On behalf of the citizens of Nagasaki, I would like to extend this message to the Interface Peace Gathering, commemoration of Hiroshima and the Nagasaki atomic bombings. First of all, I would like to express my deep respect and gratitude to the organizers for organizing this annual event to offer prayer to the repose of the soul of the atomic bomb victims and for peace. At 11.02 a.m. August 9th, 1945, Nagasaki was instantly destroyed by a single atomic bomb. 74,000 precious lives were lost. And the further 75,000 were injured. Based on this tragic experience, the atomic bomb survivors and the citizens of Nagasaki have continued to appeal for the realization of a world without nuclear weapons so as to make sure 
that no one else in the world will ever experience the same tragedy wrought by the use of nuclear weapons. In January of this year, as we marked 76 years from the atomic bombing, the Treaty on the, the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons entered into force. This also marked a new beginning towards the realization of a world without nuclear weapons. As uh, the voice calling for the abolition of nuclear weapons facilitated the birth of the P TPNW, we civil society must work together and continue to speak out more than ever before in order to utilize the treaty's en entry into force as momentum to accelerate the progress towards the abolition of nuclear weapons. The key to doing so will be so will be for many people to share their wishes for the abolition of nuclear weapons by utilizing opportunities such as this event. I firmly believe that the culmination of each and every precious action will create a larger movement that will ultimately affect change in the world. I sincerely hope that through this event, the seeds of peace will be sown in your hearts and for it to grow, spreading the culture of peace throughout the world. In closing, I extend my best wishes for the successful event and for the good health and continued success of all the guests and participants. August 5th, 2021. Tomihisa Taue, Mayor of Nagasaki. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kimoto, to deliver the message, peace message from the mayor of Nagasaki. It's a uh, peace exhibition or uh, Genbaku Ten. Oh 
in the video that we saw just now, featuring the uh, the spiritual singer Lula Lena. Please uh, continue to have him to speak for us, the keynote speaker for tonight. Okay, so we're gonna uh, welcome now our keynote of tonight, um, Ambassador Anwaru K. Chowdhury. He's the former 
Under Secretary General of the United Nations and founder of the Civil Society Coalition, Global Movement for the Culture and a Peace. Thank you very much for this welcome and uh, my opportunity to speak here today. This year, is the 28th annual Hiroshima Nagasaki Interfaith Peace Gathering. My warmest felicitations to Reverend TK Nakagaki and the Hewa Peace, Found Peace and Reconciliation Foundation of New York. Hiroshima Day is observed on 6 August annually with the primary purpose of promoting peace. The world also observes in this month, the UN declared International Day against nuclear tests on 29 August annually since 2010. To increase awareness about the nuclear test and exploration and the need to stop them. So this Hiroshima day or the upcoming anti-nuclear day, let us make all possible efforts to stop the nuclear tests and work towards achieving a peaceful world. I hope that we will be able to convey once again the feelings of the Hibakusha as represented at this gathering by Tomoko Morimoto West, such as no one else should have to go through this and appeal to the international community for the abolition of nuclear weapons. Hiroshima the city and its people have a unique and influential role and mission in building sustainable peace. We recall proudly the initiative by the city of Hiroshima in establishing the mayors for peace to mobilize city level leadership for a nuclear weapon-free world. Mayors for Peace as an organization has developed into a network of cities for peace that transcends national boundaries. I recall my participation and keynote speech at a global conference on sustainable peace in Hiroshima in 2006 as a coalition of civil society organizations the global movement for the culture of peace popularly known as gmcop is particularly heartened by the fact that current vision action plan of the mayors for peace has added a vital new pillar with the objective of promoting the culture of peace to its existing two other original pillars. In expressing GMCOP's appreciation to the president of Mayors for Peace, Mayor Kazumi Matsui of Hiroshima for this bold visionary decision. In a letter to him yesterday, I welcomed wholeheartedly his announcement that, and I quote, the promotion of a culture of peace is an indispensable principle, an effective means of expanding and enhancing such citizen level awareness to the consensus of civil society and thereby freeing the government from nuclear deterrence, end of quote. As this is 
and interfaith peace gathering, I would like to emphasize that all religions, all faiths, all beliefs teach us to be good human beings with compassion for each other. Their teachings, their messages are noble and universal. But on many occasions, those are, as we say, lost in translation, failing to create true understanding and generate a spirituality that makes our planet a better place to live. One of the most spiritual things we can do is to embrace our humanity, connect with those around us to show understanding, respect, compassion and appreciation for each other. To paraphrase Mother Teresa who lamented saying that the greatest disease today is not cancer, it is being unwanted, unloved and uncared for. She said that we can cure physical diseases with medicine, but the only cure for despair and hopelessness, hatred and prejudice, violence and conflict is love and compassion. Drawing attention to a different kind of poverty, poverty of spirituality. She said, and I quote, there are many in the world who are dying for piece of bread, but there are many more dying for a little love, end of quote. Spirituality raises each one of us to a much higher level of consciousness where we are truly empowered to share and receive love and compassion unconditionally. Spirituality is a universal human experience, something that touches us all. It is a broad concept with room for many perspectives. Spirituality, therefore, is integrally linked with interfaith work, which aims at religious pluralism taken as normative, ensures that religious differences do not cause conflict or even concern. From Asia to Africa, to America, to Europe, the world seeks a remedy for prejudice, violence and conflict. It is the need of the hour, the key to interfaith harmony and to reducing violence lies in education, a universal education that encourages equality, pluralism and diversity. In 2016, I moderated a two-day conference near Los Angeles, billed as World Summit of Educators, jointly convened by the students and faculty of Soka University of America, focusing on education for global citizenship, which brought together 75 educators from 30 plus countries. Outcome of that conference also linked tolerance and respect for diversity to education. It emphasized very pertinently that, and I quote, education has the most vital role to play 
in empowering our societies to embrace the concept of global citizenship as essential to humanity's quest for peace and progress. End of quote. Progressive times require the all pervasive culture of peace, which recognizes that peace not only is the absence of conflict, but also requires a positive, dynamic, participatory process where dialogue is encouraged and conflicts are solved in a spirit of mutual understanding and cooperation. The United Nations Program of Action on Culture of Peace, adopted by consensus in 1999, therefore asserts that a key role in the promotion of the culture of peace belongs to all, including religious bodies and groups. Mindful of the 10 minute time set for me, I want to start wrapping up my speech by outlining the three integrated mainstream for the coming years, bolstering the global movement for the culture of peace and changing our world for the better in the time of COVID-19. Number one, education. All educational institutions need to offer opportunities that prepare the students not only to live fulfilling lives, but also to be responsible and productive citizens of the world. This should more appropriately be called education for global citizenship. Number two, women. As I always say emphatically, without peace, development cannot be realized. Without development, peace is not achievable. But without women, neither peace nor development is possible. And number three, youth and children. It is essential to recognize the empowerment of young people as a major element in building the culture of peace. Young people of today should embrace the culture of peace in a way that can not only shape their lives, but can also shape the future of the world. For this, I believe that early childhood affords a window of opportunity for us to sow the seeds of transition to the culture of peace from an early life. Let me assert on this special day for humanity by underscoring that interfaith education becomes meaningful and I quote, when children understand that human values exist in all the great traditions, when children glimpse the humanity of believers of other faiths, and when children know that truth is expressed outside their own religion, then narrow-mindedness, the root of violence, and terrorism will not survive." End of quote. The culture of peace is not a quick fix. It is a movement, not a revolution. Peace cannot be imposed from outside. It must be realized from within. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador and Rob Chaudhary, for your wonderful messages of tonight. So next, who we'll in 
Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Charlie. We're very, very grateful for your uh, wonderful talks. And uh, so I do really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So next, we'll um, welcome uh, Ms. Penny Khalid, a young leader from the Research Association, Parliament of Pakistan. Hello. I hope I'm audible. Um, thank you so much for uh, having me join in today. It's a real honor to, uh, um, to, be, to be speaking with all of you. Um, I really appreciate the ambassador for, for talking about women and young people. Um, and I hope to touch upon a little bit of that as we um, uh, as we talk about this important occasion. Um, I feel that we've come together today to commemorate um, an event that um, changed our beautiful world uh, forever. And uh, I'd like to share a little bit of my own personal story and how I came to be involved in um, working around nuclear issues on both grassroots level in South Asia um, and beyond, and uh, sort of uh, some of the surprising turns that journey took over time. Um, so I was very young when I first uh, heard about nuclear weapons, and uh, you know, maybe, maybe five or six years old, um, and it was a time when uh, Pakistan, which is where I'm from, um, first tested uh, their atomic bomb in, I think, 1999. And we were told at the time that these weapons are the epitome of science and technology, um, that they um, are absolutely essential for national and international security. And, um, and that was a pervasive story um, you know, for people of my generation um, as we were growing up. But then the war on terror rolled around. Um, as we were young teenagers, um, attending high school, you know, trying to uh, take our exams, do our homework, and and those, uh, you know, that regular, uh, uh, you know, normal student life was interrupted by uh, by news of bomb attacks, um, and uh, you know, watching watching TV to find out that other children just like us were, you know, were, were not safe. Um, our own country, sometimes very near, and that really shaped our wor our worldview uh, growing up. And uh, you know, this this direct contrast between being told that these weapons are um, they exist to keep us safe, um, and at the same time, um, just turning the TV on or calling our family and friends to find out if they were safe um, in the face of these terror attacks. Um, um, there was this bright contrast between these two realities. And and I feel like a lot of young people in my generation, women in particular, began asking a lot of questions um, in terms of, um, you know, what's going on? What, what, what does security mean? Um, do these weapons really make us safe? And most importantly, what is it that we can do uh, to, uh, to, to create some kind of impact to help make ourselves safer, but then also make the people that we love and care about uh, safer as well. So, so in that search uh, you know, for answers, um, I came across uh, work by Global Zero, which uh, is an international organization based out of Washington, D.C., but were you know, expanding their work in South Asia at the time. And I had the great honor of working with, uh, you know, through this platform and through this organization, coming into contact with uh, young people at um, the grassroots level, uh, not just in Pakistan, but also in India. And for the first time, um, you know, hope that I felt um, and some of the, the power, really, that I observed came from uh, people who were regular, ordinary, everyday people, like just like me, um, they were young people, um, and and they cared. You know, they cared. Um, they were asking the same questions. Um, for the first time, we were not thinking in terms of um, 
you know, whether we belong to one country or another country in a region that historically has been um, quite divided. Um, but instead, we were thinking like a single community of young people and activists, um, many young women, um, who wanted to come together and uh, make sure that we were sort of on the right side of history, make sure that we were asking the right questions, um, and to make sure that we weren't buying into um, narratives that may have worked up until a point, but no longer were fully addressing the kind of challenges and the dangers um, that we faced in a world that was um, you know, becoming increasingly complex, increasingly um, uh, you know, not, no longer being able to define our world in those neat black and white boxes um, that we had observed or been taught um, yeah, growing up. So, so really, I think the most empowering moment um, uh, within that, and this really, uh, the work that, you know, we then went on to uh, initiate and expand and carry on to grassroots communities across um, South Asia, uh, primarily through student leaders, training volunteers, um, to thousands and thousands of young people. Um, primarily, this, uh, this 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 movement was powered by just that that um, that sense of hope and that sense of empowerment um, that young people were feeling, uh, uh, who, that we were working with, um, that came from knowing that we were in this together, you know, and and. I think some of these questions, you know, were too big uh, to address just on our own. It was, it really took the power of a community, uh, power of a community that, um, you know, that had historically been so divided, but this one issue that, um, that, that had the power to, to destroy us, but at the same time, led us down a path where we could, uh, you know, we could unite in the face of this common threat, uh, no matter where we were from, what side of the India-Pakistan border. Um, that we were able to take that as an opportunity to really engage with one another and ask uh, ask questions from those in power, but then also from each other, uh, and, and really share those human stories. Uh, you know, learn from the example of. Um, of, of those who had gone before us, from the stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, um, and and sort of um, find that common ground, you know. And and as we as we continued in this work, as we continued down this path of asking questions, we realized that we were not the only ones, you know, whether just in, you know in that region, uh, but that there were many others like us around the world as well. There was this new energy. Uh, amongst young people and, and many, many young women um, in a field that's traditionally quite, uh, uh, you know, not, not uh, I mean, we, we didn't see a lot of young women in it just as we were starting out, but as we went along, we found that a lot of the questions that were being asked were pertinent to young, uh, to young women as well. And that was really encouraging and heartening. And, and it was really powerful to see... Um, Again, that this narrative was being owned by um, uh, was was being owned by young people in ways that um, had not been the case before, and um, and that there was room for for almost redefining security in a way that um, that doesn't pit us against one another, um, that doesn't. Uh, you know, identify uh, you know one group as you know as above another one. Um, it was it was very organic. It was very democratic and in a very essential sense. Um, and it became about you know the people um, wanting to define for ourselves that what is it that really makes us safe. So I think that's. Part of the beauty of interfaith uh, community as well. I've got since gone on since this time. I've gone on to work with uh, with interfaith groups, uh, other young people from the United States, from South Asia, from around the world. Um, and I think where we talk about nuclear weapons being, uh, you know, when we where we talk about you know the harrowing example, uh, historical example in Japan. 
Um, I think there's also, uh, you know, just this tremendous um, power, um, should we choose to utilize it, in the sense of oneness and togetherness um, that we may be able to tap into should we combine our forces and combine our energies and come together, you know, as, as interfaith community, as young community, um, as women, um, and really uh, redefine how we want to... Uh, how we want to keep ourselves safe um, for the years and decades to come, and particularly as you know the world um, is changing so fast. You know there is unconventional uh, new threats from from pandemics, from climate change. Um, and this is this is our moment to really um, uh, uh, to really sort of uh, bring about change um, and really think about security in, in new and creative ways. Um, that's kind of uh, where uh, some of the work that we're doing right now. Um, I'm uh, uh, I'm working on, um, on research and starting a PhD on this particular issue. So um, I'm you know I'm very uh, very excited for some of the possibilities. And I think this is um, you know our moment. These you know right now really is the moment to be seized in terms of um, um, finding new ways to to move forward, um, think about not just a world without nuclear weapons, but a world beyond nuclear weapons and what that might, uh, you know, what, what that might mean for, uh, for human, um, and not just, not for just for us to survive, but for, for us to thrive on um, the global community. So thank you for, uh, again, for this opportunity, um, for, uh, for, for coming together in this, uh, on this on this great on this on this occasion, so as, as we can, so that we can look back, um, and in looking back, we can um, path, uh, chart a new path forward for all of us together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Honey. So next, we'd like to um, recognize some supporters as a thank you note. Uh, this event is organized by the Heiwa Peace and Reconciliation Foundation of New York and supported by the Buddhist Council of New York, the Gaia Holistic Foundation, the Global Movement for the Culture of Peace, the Interface Center of New York, the Interface Center of USA, the New York Board of Rabbis, the, the NPO General Earth, the Origami Therapy Association, the Pax Christi New York State, the Tierra Group, and the United Religions Initiatives, and the World Yoga Community. The Heva Peace and Reconciliation Foundation of New York was founded by Rev. Do, uh, Rev. Reverend Dr. T.K. Nakagaki, a Jodo Shinshu Buddhist priest from Japan three years ago, to promote peace in the world and non-violent conflict resolution using Buddhist principles. It's a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We really appreciate for your kind donation to the, the Heiwa Peace and Reconciliation Foundation of New York. And as I introduced that uh, at the beginning of this event, uh, we will have the, uh, the part two of this um, Heiwa Peace Inter Interface Memorial Program. The next part two is on Nagasaki Day on August 8th at 8 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. in Eastern Standard Time. Like I, uh, I described, this year marks the 76th year after the, the active bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. So, uh, yeah, appreciate very much for all the kind support. 
And uh, so we do also receive some support from uh, the community too. So I just wanted to show, so some parts that we said people can send some peace message together with the donations. And so some, some of the people did it, although it was uh, last, time, last minute. Uh, so I really appreciate their, their helping us. Now we will introduce Ms. Toshiko Akiyoshi and Mr. Lu Tabake and um, Ms. Toshiko Akiyoshi is a Grammy nominated pianist and the Mr. Lu Tabake is a saxophonist and her husband. I say something? We'd like to play a composition that I wrote uh, for uh, an event in Shizuoka Sengen Shrine. Uh, it's called Cherry uh, Sakura Princess. Ready? Well, you have something.
Very pretty tune. I, I have to uh, Doso. talk about the Doso. next tune. It is just a coincidence, but years ago, there's a Nakara priest in Hiroshima. He commissioned me to write about the Hiroshima. So I'll make a story short. It came very long piece called Hiroshima Rising from Abyss. And uh, the last part is called Hope. Uh, we played, we came back to States, and that next day, uh, we have trade center was the bomb down. And since then, we used to play, I used to have a large band on some and we used to play every Monday night. I always, since then, I always play the last part of the uh, end of um, either my solo concert or the big band or like something like this particular time or something like that. So uh, I would do the same thing today. Mr. Moko Toshiko Akiyoshi and Mr. Ru Tabake for wonderful performance. It's very special tonight. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, thank you so much. That sounds very wonderful, and both of you look very nice. and. Uh, Nice couple, always to see, and thank you again. <laughs> so just a couple minutes uh, for the new film. It was created, documentary film though, 
about uh, Hibakusha, uh, Salon san, and uh, also you know his she received the, uh, the award with a ICANN uh, for the piece uh, Nobel Prize. If you remember the two years ago, so 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 that's the kind of related. And then the, this movie itself is created by the president of the uh, New York Hiroshima Kai, uh, Takeuchi san, uh, Michi Takeuchi. That's where I was born. I was 13 years of age at that time. My most important role is to share survivors' experiences. All these schoolmates of mine are gone. They are wiped out from the face of the planet. Setsuko is one of the most compelling people I've ever met. She's had a profound impact. This treaty can and will change the world. When we met, Setsuko awakened the dormant feelings I had about my family's history as Hiroshima survivors. She urged me to research my family's story. This is the continued impact of those bombs 70 plus years on. When I think of all the people who shared that fate with me on that day, I almost trembled. You think about her journey from the ashes of her hometown to a Nobel Peace Prize. It's an extraordinary life story. My work demanded certain sacrifice, but I don't regret how I have lived. I'm not interested in sympathy. I want your action. That's why I'm still speaking about this. The dreams of the survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki has been the abolition of nuclear weapons. That would be the day I wish I could be alive to witness. So Mr. Shinji Harada is one of the Japan top recording artists who was born and raised in Hiroshima and also Hiroshima Peace Culture Ambassador. Hi everyone, my name is Shinji Harada. I'm a singer songwriter based in Japan and I have been performing overseas these past years. In the midst of the global pandemic due to COVID-19 since last year, we have come to a crossroads where we have to think about many things and choose our future. Do we open the door to the idea that only what matters is your own good, or the door to the idea that we should help one another? We already know the answer to that question. That's why we are now all facing this challenge that confronts the entire human race. World harmony and world peace is the, another challenge. Each one of us must put aside our selfishness and choose to live our lives with love and compassion for others. True world peace will be achieved when this desire reached and every one of us expands to the point where the hearts of over 7 billion people are directed in the same way towards kindness. Let's fight the virus of selfishness that causes violence and brutality to others and cure it with the powerful vaccine of kindness. The spirit comment that has befallen all of humanity has an opportunity to reclaim kindness and start walking towards true world peace. Now is the time to turn adversity into opportunity and practice acts of kindness. Anyone can be a lighthouse that lights up the world around us. 
we can create a peaceful and wonderful future together. It is up to each and every one of our lives to make it happen. Let's believe and step forward. Let us shine our light and move forward to the light of a greater future. Hiroshima, Kalahajime, yo Everybody Hiroshima, Kalahajime, yo Oh, oh, oh Come on Hiroshima is the place to start Maybe small, but together the light will be strong enough to spread all over the world. So please become part of this light, and together let's change the world. The songs I will sing is called The Light. <laughs>
James, uh, Mr. James Lynch from the British Council of New York. So, Mr. James, are you ready? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening. Good morning. Again, my name is James Lynch, and I'm the current president of the Buddhist Council of New York. Um, obviously, today we have come together hopeful but yet somber in solidarity with all those who are still being impacted by the attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, respectively. We're ever mindful of those who have been attacked and lost their lives. And they, we know that that actions and those actions still reverberate in the world ever since. Indeed, we have come together to remember them and honor their lives and say we are with you and that we are our brother's keeper. And that we have come to establish as Ambassador Charity noted to come together to create a new culture of peace. Indeed, whether we're Buddhist, Jewish, Muslim, Christian, Zoroastrian, or whatever faith tradition, we're coming together as a beloved community. So for me, we must make the world see and remember the Buddha's sacred words that we are not born as saints. We become saints by our deeds. I would humbly suggest to all of you that Venerable Nakagaki, the Hewa Peace and Reconciliation Foundation, and all of you and taking a firm stance for peace and against nuclear weapons by your deeds and efforts here today, and those who are participating by the internet to help for the benefit of others, are according to the Buddha, 
doing sacred acts, sacred deeds. Indeed, we can rest assured that our actions today are the continuing of a long tradition of regardless of the faith traditions of a compassionate coalition, which truly understands that we cannot move faster than the speed of trust. And that we must find ways every day to trust each other and help remove nuclear weapons from the human family. Finally, as the 19th century Buddhist scholar Hijami Nakamura noted, merely knowing religious teachings means nothing. They must be embodied somewhere in the actions taken by our physical bodies. So today, we use our bodies, even over the internet, to mindfully remember those who lost their lives in Hiroshima and Naga Nagasaki, and to know that they're not forgotten. And that today is a sacred day with a renewed sense of hope for the possibilities of better days ahead. We must remember the Buddha's final words in some ways. We must make ourselves the light and the truth the light, and we must be the light for others. Let us pray that the great life force in and through the universe, whom we devoutly revere and often call by different names, the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and saints of all faiths and yes. countless heavenly beings, so to omnipresent in the 10 directions, will watch over our peaceful steps today in whatever way they can extend their hand of compassion and guidance and beckon forth peace here on our water rich planet, Mother Earth. We also pray that the world of all living beings will find peace. Nam myoho renge kyo, James Lynch, um, President of the Buddhist Council, I offer these words of respect. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Koji Sato, and I am Vice President of the Japanese American Association of New York. I would like to thank Reverend Nakagaki for inviting me to say a few words at this event. This year marks the 76th year after the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I'm sure that the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki 76 years ago would have never imagined what would happen on August 6th in Hiroshima and August 9th on, in Nagasaki. I pray to all the lives that were lost on those days and how the lives of those that survived those days have been damp changed forever due to the effects of radiation. August 6th and August 9th, 1945, will also forever affect the lives of the generations of descendants of all the survivors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As a father, it is my hope that my children and future grandchildren will never have to experience a world where nuclear weapons will be used again. The world must reflect on the devastating effects of nuclear weapons and that it can never destroy the lives of so many people again. I join with all the other speakers to wish peace on earth. We are all people on this earth and must work together in order to prevent wars. War is extremely destructive to the lives of so many people. And it's my hope that we all have all learned from the devastation of World War I and World War II in order that there is never a World War III. With the advancement of nuclear weapons, the next world war will certainly lead to the use of nuclear weapons. It is hoped that the world leaders understand the devastation that the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki caused and that it will never be repeated again. Thank you and please spread peace. こんばんは。私は、ティアラグループの代表で、ニューヨーク平和ファンデーションの秘書をしております。愛席の友します。去年から世界各国で新型コロナウイルス感染症が猛威を振るっていますが、感染症対策に取り組みつつ、その不安が
この団体の秘書としてまた協力団体のティアラグループとして今後とも企画運営に関わりたいと存じますニューヨークヘアファンデーションのご講演をいただきティアラグループは広島は明日 So as a conclusion maybe first of all I would like to thank、uh, uh, Yoshiko Nakamura さん She's an MC today Uh, yes, a lot of work she has to help today. <laughs> she, this morning she h a s headache and all those things, but in spite of that,、so、she was able to help me this time. Without her, <laughs> this would be really messy. <laughs> but you know, it's、uh, interesting、um, what do you call it? arrangements. <laughs> Sometimes, I guess, Buddhists call Buddha's arrangements, whatever the reason. Because we don't know, maybe you know, some of the reason that the way is this one, but yet it's happened, so they might have some meaning. <laughs> so, you know, any, everything what happens should have some meaning and find a way,、uh, find a meaning with, in everything what we do and what we live, how we live. So, that's so cool again. But that's our instruments. <laughs>、um, so I thank you very much for everyone.、Uh, one message that I wanted to share this year is the part of uh, 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 Mayor Matsui's message, which is again the 2000, I mean, this year to,、uh, on January. Uh, this, uh, the, The nuclear weapons become illegal. So, but that's one thing. But then the, we all need to support. So, once somebody do make something good move, then I think we should all support. And then, so we are working together. And that, that's togetherness is something that I feel very important. So, I hope、uh, through this session today. You know,、uh, like、uh, I was really aware <laughs> aware this year, especially, you know, the, when we started doing the linking together for the world and other parts of the world. And all of a sudden, you know, so many places they're doing a、uh, you know, peace ceremony today, even in the morning and then tomorrow.、Uh, one thing, we do have a different greetings. But yet, those are also videotaped. So I don't think it works. It might stop again. And so,、um, as far as that, I can do. And,、um, but, but, but part that they're going to do tomorrow. So I just wanted to mention there, is, there will be a, a Tiara group who is、uh, also supporting t h e s e events today, have another event s tomorrow. So, like eight o'clock. In the morning,、uh, there will be、uh, some musical parts, and I'll be there too to speak. And also,、uh, 9th, August 9th,、um, so which is Monday, I believe. Yeah, and like at 10 30, they will start、uh, events as well. So, so the, in、uh, many places, you know, people are doing uh, this uh, peace work. And I know one of our friends in Boston, they're doing exactly the same moment that we did today. So t h e y probably is over by now, too. But so, you know, it's nice to know the more people do their own way. You know, it's not the number, you know, how many people come, but rather, you know, you do what you can do. You know, it's,、uh, yeah, that's probably. Is a key to bring the peace and try to continue. And、um, I think, yeah, you need a little more patient to continue, but I think it's very, very important for us to work together. So let's work together and let's support each other for peace. So thank you very much for today to joining us. I guess <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very, very sorry for those who gave me the、uh, videos. 
but uh, yeah, the live part <laughs> was done okay, but uh, video is is always, uh, I guess, a risk now, <laughs> and so. But uh, we'll do the best to show on uh, Nagasaki Day. Okay, so Nagasaki Day will be very long, <laughs> probably <laughs> starting from um, eight p.m. But probably end like 11 p.m. So, but I, I think it's good, important to important things. Why don't we spend the time? You know, everything doesn't have to be rush. Everything, you know, the peace work is uh, not rushing. <laughs> if you rush, you can't create the peace. Probably, so just continuing. Uh, you know, you just continue simply, and uh, that's the power of the peace. And I believe we can create a peace continuously making efforts to bring peace. You know, there are some people <laughs> always have, what do you call it, uh, you know, the, the, they're not supporting you, but yet you never know. Maybe 10 years later, you know, they may join us and <laughs> they become very active too. So I think, um, yeah. The continuation, patience, those are very important. So I'd like to finish today with, with uh, cultivating a peace within ourselves. You know, we can't, we may not be control everyone, but yet at least we can control ourselves. <laughs> because at least if, we, if even you cannot control yourself, how can it be possible to control the others? So why don't we start the... Uh, peace within, I mean, myself first. So let me ring the bell, and that will be the end of uh, today's uh, peace gathering. So before I go, uh, do I forget anything, <laughs> Nakamura-san? I think you, you covered pretty much everything. So okay. uh, whatever we couldn't uh, show tonight, today, mm -hmm. um, we hope that, that we can share on the Nagasaki day mm. on the eighth. <laughs> so, so let me invite you to the peace prayer. I will ring three bells, and uh, you know at the beginning we have an interface prayer. So you can do your own prayer if you like. And if you don't have any religious background, at least you can think of the happiness and peace to all and yourself as well. And so three bell, maybe first bell, would be thinking of Hiroshima today. And then second bell, thinking of Nagasaki for August uh, 9 or 8. Mm -hmm. so, and then the, the last spell, I think, nice to think of yourself, what you can do, how you see, and how you, what do you call, um, learn. What did you learn? And what can you do? So like uh, those reflection will be the last spell. Okay. And I uh, hope we don't want to bell another place for the bomb drop, but you know, we will stop. I mean, me <laughs> yourself can stop the third atomic bomb. Okay, so with that feeling, uh, we'll ring the bell. By the way, one message that I want to tell you is also this is a silent moment, right? Moment of silence or silent, but uh, when you become silent. Or you can hear all of the sound. And that's a, more like a deep hearing. You know, a lot of time you just surface level, but then you can go in to listening. And then the silence, our silent has a S I L E N T. But if you change the order, you become listen. L-I-S-T-E-N, right? So which means 
those are all connected. Be silent, then you can listen. When you're talking, you don't really listen. <laughs> so it's a moment of silent meditation. So you has a moment of listening deep. May all living beings be happy, well, and peaceful. May we all be free from suffering. May we all be free from pain. May we all be free from attachment, from greed, anger, and selfishness. May we all attain ultimate happiness and peace. And thank you very much and peace to you all yes. thank you thank you and thank you a message from the mayors of hiroshima it is an honor and pleasure to send this message on the occasion of Interfaith Peace Gathering in New York on August 6, 1945. A single atomic bomb destroyed our city, claiming countless innocent civilian lives. Having experienced the tragedy of the bombings, Hiroshima continuously appeals for a peaceful world without nuclear weapons based upon the uh, ardent will be Hibaksha. No one else should suffer as we have. However, looking at the global situation surrounding nuclear weapons, more than 13,000 nuclear warheads will exist today with nuclear weapons states increasing and uh, modernizing sorry their nuclear arsenals instead of uh, fulfilling their obligations to pursue negotiation in good faith for nuclear disarmament as uh, stipulated in the article 4 of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, NPT. As humanity continue to face its newest threat, COVID-19, the world has become together to tackle the virus. Proof that we are capable of responding to this threat. I believe that the people of the world will be able to overcome the threat posed to humankind by nuclear weapons in a much the same way. By working together under common principles and remaining steadfast in our, our position as a number of people who can speak of the horrors of these weapons from the experience declines. It is increasingly important to pass their earnest will for peace on to the next generation, establish as a shared value in civil society, 
the idea that nuclear weapons and war should not exist and make every effort towards realizing the lasting world peace. The NPT, which went into effect in 1970, and the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, which entered into force in January 2021, are both critical to elimination of the nuclear weapons, even though they com com uh, comprise the uh, framework that we must pass on to the future generations. Their future is yet op opaque. In order for world leaders to strengthen their determination to ensure this framework functions effectively, it is vital that we create an environment that steers them towards transforming policy. We must continue to raise awareness of peace in civil society so that we may generate momentum towards peace and nurture international public opinions for nuclear abolition. It therefore could be more meaningful that you have organized this event, transcending differences in revision to share a wish for a peaceful world without nuclear weapons. And I extend it to you, my deepest respects. Together with more than 8,000 mayors for peace, member cities from uh, 165 countries and regions, the city of Hiroshima intends to create an environment that encourages world leaders to take steps towards nuclear abolition. I would like to ask all of you to act in solidarity with us as we strive to eliminate the absolute evil that is nuclear weapons and realize lasting world peace. In closing, I extend my best wishes for the great success of this event, as well as good health and happiness of all in attendance. August 5th, 2021, Matsui Katsumi, Mayor, the city of Hiroshima. Thank you.